Hey everyone, what's in the news this week? Well, MP Neil Parrish was forced to resign after being caught looking at adult websites. Allegedly, the clip featured a blonde watching on as a man of Indian descent screwed the taxpayer. Anyway, as I said, he's now stood down, presumably after being stood up the other night on the internet, all whilst the rest of the backbenchers make do with smutty remarks about Angela Rayner. Tennis legend Boris Becker, he was declared bankrupt about five years ago, but just this last week he was also convicted and jailed when it turned out he'd hidden millions away in a secret bank account, as you do. Anyway, when he went to the court, legal, not tennis, he was served, get it, two and a half years, and when asked by a female lawyer how many months that equated to, he said it's about 30, love. 30, love. That's enough tennis puns for now, I guess. And of course, the war in Ukraine continues. The West has largely stayed out of it, although there's always a temptation to get involved to distract from domestic issues. In a 100% related note, the Russians have said the EU and the US are the true aggressors, and the Americans have said that all they want is peace, and they're prepared to fight to prevent a war. I don't know, sometimes you have to destroy the village to save the village, I guess. Anyway, I guess the other big story of the week was Elon Musk's acquisition of Twitter for $44 billion, which is a crazy amount, because I got it for free on the Apple Store. The left have, of course, gone nuts at the thought of the social media platform not continuing to regulate what people can and cannot talk about on the internet. But the company, of course, long ago lost that right to police the conversation. People were famously banned for suggesting that COVID originated in a Chinese laboratory, although that has since turned out to be the acceptable origin story. The New York Post, a proper newspaper, it was banned from Twitter for reporting the story about the Hunter Biden laptop after Twitter said it was all Russian propaganda, although it later turned out to be 100% true, much as the likes of The Guardian and the BBC have since tried to bury that particular story. Twitter is not fit for purpose and hasn't been for a long time, even accommodating for the fact that free speech is a tricky concept, made more so by being tied up in context and potential misunderstandings. Here's a good example of that. The phrase, quote, we will rock you. That's an inspiring lyric when it's sung by Freddie Mercury, but it's a terrifying proposition when it's being handed down by a Saudi junch as a sentence. We will rock you. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.